I'll preface this by saying my approach to paranormal things in life is to be open-minded until proven otherwise. So for full disclosure, I do believe in almost everything paranormal, but I've never actually seen anything worth noting myself, other than what may have been a Bigfoot in Oregon back in 2012. But I was pretty far away and it could have been just a distant bear, or even a tree. Anyway, I am a single dad. My son was born in 2010. I like to think of myself as a very dedicated dad. He's by far and away the best thing in my life ever. And as such, when he's involved, my memories are usually clearer and more profound. Since the first time he ever slept in a bed with me, I can recall odd things happening during sleep. And it's every time he sleeps in a bed with me. Noises. Blurry visions as I wake up from such noises. A window or a door open that I knew was closed. A nightlight unplugged and on the floor. Stuff like that. Well, yesterday he was sick, and I let him sleep with me in my bed last night. I recently switched to overnight shifts at work. So when I'm off now, I've become a very light sleeper during normal sleep hours. The last thing I remember before dozing off was that my son had kicked off his blankets. He prefers to sleep that way, and I think this detail may be important, and also that his pillow had kind of shifted towards the headboard, and his head wasn't on the pillow at all. This morning, a little before 4am, I awoke to a noise. Only this time, I actually saw something. As I sat up, I noticed my bedroom door open, and I never leave it open. As I'm noticing this, my focus becomes clearer, and I swear that along the door frame I can see four very long fingers. Not claws, fingers. As I move to get out of bed, the hand moved away, and I see what I can only describe as a fleeing tail. As soon as I get to my door and look into the next room, there is nothing. I searched everywhere, nothing still. All doors were locked, as were the windows. When I go back to check on my son, the pillow is back perfectly under his head. The blankets were pulled up on him, and the fever he had had, had broken. He was peacefully sleeping. I have never, including this morning, felt threatened by what I've seen or heard. In contrast, I've probably felt way more at ease than I should have in this situation. A couple of notes. I have always had, and still do have, dogs who sleep in my room with me and they never barked or growled. Also, I do have a history of sleep paralysis, though I can always tell when it's been an episode, just by how terrifying they are. I don't think this is what this situation is. Lastly, I do not drink at all, and if I ever do anything, it's maybe smoke a joint when I go camping with high school buddies. The question is, should I be worried? Are there such things as sweet cryptids that watch over your children? Does this sound like something any of you have heard, or is this some sort of subconscious thing I'm experiencing? Any info or help would be much obliged. When I was growing up, my grandparents didn't really have a stable living situation. I actually still to this day don't know the reasons for this, nor does it matter but basically I remember they were always moving to new houses. I'm not sure where this particular house actually was, and I couldn't find it if I wanted to, but I remember this place in particular only because of what happened there. My sister and I loved spending the night with our grandma, so we would go over there every other weekend. Ever since the first night I slept there, I would have very vivid nightmares about a little girl running from a large, shadowy creature almost similar to Bigfoot if he were made out of shadows. She would always find her way down a dead-end alley, with nowhere else to go, the creature closing in. Each time he would reach out to grab her, she would let out a terrible scream, and I would wake up. A few weeks after they initially moved into this place, I remember my grandma telling my sister and I about the strange noises she was hearing at night. She claimed that she would hear children's footsteps scurrying around in the attic, as well as children laughing. My cousins spent the night there a fair amount as well, and they said they heard it too. Personally, I never heard anything like that, but I'm very glad I didn't at that age. One day, 
a little bit before lunchtime. I was sitting in the guest bedroom watching TV and waiting for my grandma to make something to eat. It wasn't a big room. There was a bed, a window next to the bed, which was open with daylight coming through at this time. A TV, a rocking chair, and a closet. I remember my grandma coming in, telling me that the food's almost done, and closing the door behind her. I've never forgotten or really understood what happened after. All of a sudden, I noticed the rocking chair begin to move back and forth, as if there was someone sitting in it. My eyes trailed from the chair to the wall behind it, where I saw the shadow of a woman sitting in it, knitting something furiously. I noticed movement in my peripheral vision, so I looked around, and on the other wall, there were two little kids playing, a girl and a boy around six years old. Out of nowhere, a male figure approaches the two and begins beating them with a stick. The moment I took all of this in and truly realized what it looked like I was seeing, all movement ceased. The old woman stopped rocking the chair. The man paused his attack on the two children. And then, all of the shadows seemed to turn their heads and look straight at me. I couldn't see any faces or anything like that but it felt like when you walk into a busy room and everyone stares for a second. Petrified, I screamed for my grandma and closed my eyes. She came in and asked what was wrong. I was confused as I opened my eyes because what I had just seen was no longer there. It had all disappeared by the time she came into the room. I never saw anything else like that there, or in my life, honestly, but I remember it all so clearly. And before my grandma passed away in 2015, I asked her if she remembered this house. She told me that she did, and she remembered the day I called for her after seeing the shadow people. I still think about this encounter, all these years later. As always... I'm of the lady persuasion and in my 20s. Typical evening here today. I picked up groceries, which is relevant, and after putting everything away, I nearly forgot that I needed supplies from the local pet shop here, so I set off and take my sweet time in doing so, enjoying the view of the changing leaves, the crisp winds rolling through, taking in everyone's Halloween decorations, etc. After passing a new shop, I took out my notepad to jot down the name so I could look up the store online later. Just as I finished writing Look Up, my stomach dropped, so much so that I became sick with the sensation of someone watching me. I've had this feeling dozens of times before, but never to the extent of me physically halting against my will. I read the words on my notepad again, Look Up. Reluctantly, I lift my eyes after this misplaced fear, but of course no one stands out. I don't see anyone suspicious whatsoever, so I clear my throat, laugh internally at my own ridiculousness, and continue my walk before a detour into Timmy's. After placing the order, a man taps me on the shoulder. You just went grocery shopping. Yep, I sure did. A good hour earlier. Surprised, I stand there staring at him in silence. So he repeats himself. You just went grocery shopping. Bad idea. He laughs far too loud at his odd joke while I accept my bagel and hightail it out of there. The guy had to be mid-thirties, if I had to guess. Maybe 5'10 with dark blonde hair. So I tell myself it's coincidence that this guy happened to see me in the grocery store at some point and wanted to make a friendly joke. I just happened to spook myself with the earlier note-taking. Sure. Be it paranoia or not, I could not stop looking over my shoulder as I made it to the pet store. And right when I was about to head to the door to exit, I heard those internal words that physically stopped me. Look up. So I look over my shoulder. And you guessed it. There he is again. He offered me this smug-like smile and held up three fingers before laughing. My stomach may as well have dropped right out of my ass, because yes, we would have ran into each other three times now. When he turns for a moment to put something back on a shelf, I get an idea. 
I couldn't tell you where this desire even came from, but I shoved the front door open, ducked behind a row of cages, and allowed the door to close fairly loudly, announced by the pair of bells attached to the metal handle. I watched between the bars of a chinchilla cage as he turned quickly at the sound of those bells, and power walked out of the store. Now I'm no mind reader, so I can't say for certain if he thought I left and went to follow me some more, but I stayed right where I was, hung out with an adorable white chinchilla, and left a few minutes later. Not once did we cross paths again, and not once did that forceful internal voice command me to look up on the way back. I realized that I should have told the staff that I thought someone might be following me, but I'm still not sure, even now. It really could have been coincidence, and not once did he threaten me or harm me. I may delete this post if I'm overreacting, but his loud laughter and strange smile left me feeling that something was wrong with this man. About ten years ago, my best friend and I decided to stop at a local hangout of ours in Bowie, Maryland. We grew up here and spent our early years wandering the railroad tracks and woods, smoking and drinking as young people do. So this one spot is a railroad overpass at 450 and 197. There's a parking lot and a small area of grass and trees and about a 30-foot strip of land separating the tracks and the lot. So it's nighttime, and we decide to go there to smoke a cigarette. We go on the tracks, and we're facing the parking lot, so the overpass is to our left, and the tracks go on to our right. Now we're smoking and he's talking, but the entire time I'm focused to my right, peering down this track, because I have the strangest feeling. I didn't know what it was until later, and it was the feeling of being watched by a predator, which I'd never experienced before. After about two minutes, we're almost done with our cigarettes, and a helicopter flies right above us, seemingly at tree level, with the spotlight going right over us, coming from the direction of the overpass. Not ten seconds later, I hear the gravel shift from between the tracks, and I look towards the overpass. Standing right in the center, there is this giant silhouette. Now since it was dark and under the overpass, I could only see its silhouette. It was about eight or nine feet tall and burly looking as fuck. It was huge and we only looked at it for about a second before I said let's go now. We hurriedly started rushing away and we could hear gravel moving behind us and not three seconds later we both hear the most demonic, horrifying, multiple pitch screech literally right behind our heads. It came from no more than a few feet behind us. So we're running as hard as we can. And no, we didn't look back. We didn't have time. We got to the car and jumped in. And whatever was chasing us was gone. We drove around for an hour. And the only thing we could say was, what the fuck? And that's my encounter with the goat man. Now a week later, we're hanging out with our friend. Let's call him Andy. Now Andy has spent a lot of time in the woods. And he was telling us about how last week the cops were out there because they heard screams and thought a woman was being raped. So I asked him if they had helicopters out, and he said yes, and I asked him what day it was, and it was the same night we saw the goat man. This might seem far out, and I get that, but I'm about to tell the story that has been sitting around my family for some time and it's the story of the Traveler. My grandfather never traveled a lot, but every time he did, he always saw the same man on whatever mode of transportation he was using. He first saw the man on his way home from the military back in the 60s. He was on a plane. The man had gray hair and a wrinkly face. He wore a brown bowler hat and a brown trench coat. He carried a suitcase with him, and the suitcase had a little dent in the bottom left. My pa sat next to him and asked where he was going, and the man responded that he didn't know. My pa brushed it off and got home normally. The next time he saw the traveler was when he was going to my mom's wedding up in Kansas. It was a couple of years after the first time, and when he got on the bus, 
Sure enough, the man was there, suitcase and everything. My grandpa sat next to him again and asked if he remembered my pa. The man only nodded his head and continued to look out the window. He was there for the ride back, too, but nothing eventful happened. The third time it happened was right before I saw him, and it was to go see my uncle while he was in the hospital. He saw the man again, and this time he actually asked what the man's name was. He responded with the name my pa called him after that, the Traveler. My grandpa then moved seats because he was unnerved by the whole thing. The final time before my pa passed, I was there to see him for myself. It was on a plane to Kansas to see my mom and her new husband for her birthday. I went with him. I was 12. We got on the plane and my pa pointed to the man as soon as he got on. I shit you not, he was there and he was looking out the window in his seat. I sat with my grandpa across from him and before the plane took off, he turned and nodded at my pa. Then he returned to his window looking. He had that damn briefcase on him, just like Pa said, and I could clearly see the dent. We got off the plane and Pa didn't say much about it after that. Surely if the man was old as dirt in the 60s, he would have been dead by now. I saw him in 2013. This is a family story I try to keep in memory so I can honor my Pa. I haven't ridden a bus or plane so I haven't seen him, but I'm going to next Thursday and hope to see him, to ask if he knows how my pa is doing. I feel like he would know. I'd also like to get a picture of him for some evidence. I hope you got some joy out of this story. And to the traveler, if you're out there, I hope to see you soon. Back in 2008, I was a student planning to go to university and needed some extracurricular stuff I could put on my entry applications. As most UK students know, one of the best to have on there is the Duke of Edinburgh Award. As part of this award, you have to embark on an orienteering expedition, basically a long trek through woodland and rural villages, following nothing but a map and a compass, no GPS allowed. It's a teamwork experience, and you camp and overcome hurdles together, etc., Anyway, I was out of shape at the time, and so my uncle volunteered to take me out to the middle of nowhere to get some idea of what orienteering was like. We didn't stay out overnight, like what I would have to do during the real thing, but we hiked maybe ten miles through woods in a small village in pretty abysmal weather. By the end of the journey, we were soaked to the bone, and pretty miserable, looking forward to getting back to the car and heading home. For the last part of the journey, we were on a dirt trail heading uphill, with bushes and trees on either side. We were marching onward in silence at this point, when all of a sudden, there was a rustling in the foliage to our left. From behind a large bush stepped an old man in a black suit with a red bow tie and dress shoes. He looked late 70s or early 80s, very pale, liver spots dotting his face and a gray-white comb over. I was instantly weirded out. Who dresses like that to go into the woods? The instant thought seeing a guy his age out here in those clothes, especially in these weather conditions, was, this guy has lost his marbles. There was something else that took me an extra moment to notice, and it puzzled me. The guy was bone dry. He didn't even have mud on his shoes. We stopped in our tracks and just stared at the man for a moment who appeared to be as frozen and shocked at seeing us. My uncle made the first move, taking a step towards him, asking him if he was alright. The old man continued to stare, not moving even a twitch, then became suddenly very animated. It was like he suddenly snapped out of a trance. He started flailing his arms wildly, saying something awful had happened, that a good friend of his needed help. He began walking backwards into the woods, motioning for us to follow him, which we did. We started off at a brisk walk, then escalated to running as we struggled to keep up with the old man. After maybe a minute, he disappeared ahead of us, but we could hear him, so we continued to follow the noise until we reached a huge slope. We stopped at the edge and looked down to see the old man standing at the bottom, 
motioning us, pleading with us to follow him. I remember looking down, and the slope was probably at a 40 degree angle, spanned for about 50 feet or more, and slick with mud. It looked like an accident waiting to happen, especially given there were no shrubs or roots to hold on to or anything. I remember looking down at the old man on the other side of the slope, and wondering how the heck did he cross that so quickly and so cleanly. I mean at that distance it's hard to see fine detail, but I swear he still did not appear to be wet or muddy at all. My uncle and I looked at each other, and I saw he was getting as weirded out as I was. Despite my feelings, I made a step toward the edge and was going to try and make my way down when my uncle grabbed me firmly by the arm and pulled me back. Under his breath, he said to me, Something's wrong here. We took a few steps back from the edge at this point, and the old man at the bottom started to get irate. He began pleading with us again to come down the slope, telling us he needed our help, that his friend was in trouble. My uncle shouted down to the old man that we would head back to our car and call emergency services for him, that professional help would be on its way soon, that they would have all the tools to help him, etc. The old man suddenly got furious. He began jumping up and down, demanding that we come down the slope right now, or there would be hell to pay. His voice had changed drastically. He was practically growling his words. His hands bunched up into fists, pounding his knees like an angry toddler throwing a tantrum. I've never seen a grown adult fly into such a rage in my life. His eyes looked like they were on the verge of bursting out of their sockets, his skin gone from pale to red in almost an instant. We began to hurriedly make our way back the way we came, his demands and threats getting less audible as we got closer to the trail. Once on the trail, we practically power marched the remaining quarter mile or so to the car. All the while, my uncle was on the phone to the emergency services, explaining to them that possibly there was a mentally ill old man wandering the trail. We were ordered to get to our car and await the police, so we could show them where we had encountered him. About an hour later, we met four officers, two of whom had dogs with them and packs of supplies like first aid, emergency blankets, etc. We led them to the exact spot and then pointed the two officers with dogs in the direction he led us, through the bushes. The search lasted all weekend, but there was no trace of the old man. Officers said that the only trail they could pick up had been mine and my uncle's. They didn't find any footprints or anything belonging to the old man we encountered. It was one of my weirdest experiences to date. Hey guys and ladies, thanks for watching. If you want me to tell your story, email me at the address in the description. Be good to animals, even people. See ya. Hello. Hello. Yes. Who is this? What number are you trying to reach? What number is this? You got the wrong number, man. the fuck? Hello? Why don't you want to talk to me? I'm busy and I don't know who you are. What are you busy with? I'm about to watch a scary movie. You like scary movies? Yeah. Now get the hell off my phone. Don't hang up on me. Man, shut up. What do you want? I want to play a game. Here's how we play. I ask a question. If you get it right, you live. If you get it wrong, I'll gut you like a fish. Go ahead, shoot. Where does Jason Voorhees live? Camp Crystal Lake. What was the evil room in Stanley Kubrick's The Shining? Room 237. Come on, dude, kick it up a notch. Give me the hard stuff. Okay, well then, what is the book from Evil Dead? The Necronomicon Ex Mortis. Ugh. Two hours later. Alright, well how about this? What was the name of Ellen Ripley's cat in Alien? Jonesy. Shit. 
Well, you ain't gonna get this one. Yeah, you've only said that 20 damn times. What was the wooden Indian's name in Creepshow 2? Old Chief Woodenhead. Alright, forget it. We're done here. I'm gonna head over to the neighbors. Have fun, bud. Do a skit where it's, uh, like, different kinds of songs where...